Tech Tip Tuesday. I am Dr. Candace McClendon, and today we will talk about the basic components of the Big Blue Button. So if your district has chosen Canvas as your LMS system, then you're probably wondering, do you have to rely on Zoom or Google Meet to host your synchronous instruction? The answer to that is no. There is a conferencing application within, Can uh, within Canvas. So if you'll take a look at the left-hand side of my screen here, if you click on the conferences tab, it'll bring you to this page. And so you'll just simply click on the blue conference button located at the top and it will begin to populate your conferences. Of course, you name them, um, provide any kind of descriptions that you want. And so once you start populating those in order to um, start one, you'll just click on the join button and it will bring you to a screen that looks like this. And so you want to wrap your minds around creating an interactive slide deck for your students. So obviously slide one is just the default slide that Big Blue Button has. And this is just to show or um, highlight some of the components of the system. So we're going to go ahead and just click on next slide. And so that brings you to your interactive whiteboard. So the system does have an interactive whiteboard. The major tip here is if you look at your tools located on the right hand side, um, let's say you wanted to use this for modeling and you just kind of want to uh, deliver content to your students, then you'll leave it as is. But if you want your students to be able to collaborate on this interactive whiteboard, you're going to make sure that that little icon, that there's two whiteboards there. And that means that you've turned on the multi-user and students will also be able to um, write on the board. So if you click on the little hand symbol here, that brings you to your text tools where you um, have your text box, you have different shapes, you also have a drawing tool. Um, I'm an ELA person, so obviously I love the, the shapes for um, Venn diagrams and um, T-charts and things like that. If you uh, make a mistake and you see how my circles are very uneven, so I'll just click on this little arrow and I can just get rid of it. And so these are your tools for your interactive whiteboard here on the right hand side. So if you want to kind of bring in like some more information, like a PDF or a video, you'll just click on this little blue button here at the bottom. And you'll notice it pulls up um, a drop down menu where you can uh, start a poll, you can upload a presentation or share an external video from either Vimeo or YouTube. So let's just go to upload a presentation. And so here at this page, you're just browsing the file from your computer. I'm just gonna pull in a ReadWorks um, file that I have here, and I'm just gonna click on Upload. And it shouldn't take too long because the file is not fairly large. Okay, and so now it's dropped in. If you're visually challenged like me, you need this to be bigger, especially if we're gonna use this for annotation purposes. So I'm just gonna look at the bottom toolbar here and click on fit to width. And so it kind of um, brings the text into focus and you can really just kind of use these tools to do the same annotation that you would if you were in the traditional classroom. So a um, couple of other things that I want to kind of bring to your attention. So let's go back for a second. If I just click on actions and let me go back to upload a presentation. So obviously this is the article that you're currently seeing in my screen. So you see here, there's a little slash through this paper icon. If you want students to be able to download this file, you just click on that. And so it turns green. So now students will not only be able to interact with the text on the conference, they'll also be able to save that file to their um, laptop or Chromebook. So I wanted to mention that. So let's look here on the left hand side. So if I had students, you will see your list or your roster of students here. Of course, this is a practice course, so you don't see any. And this is where our chat will happen. So this is a public chat. So you see a lot of default information here, but your chat will be here. Now, another cool tool that Blue uh, Button has that I like to use, I like to kind of assign different note takers for each day. And so you have a shared notes option. And if you have an iPhone, it kind of looks like that. So if I click on it, it kind of brings my notes here. Um, so right now I'm the only person that can take notes. But of course I want you know students to be engaged. I want to create a student centered classroom. So I'm going to go to my little settings gear icon here.
and I am going to click on lock viewers. And so you see here by default, it's already turned off, but I want to turn it on and unlock it so that students can um, utilize the shared notes and they can write on it. So I'm just gonna turn it on and click apply. And so now not only will I be able to jot down important notes, um, students will be able as well. And of course, you know, you kind of have to either assign uh, certain students to do this or kind of really put some procedures in place so that it is a document that you all can use in your classroom. Um, I just challenge you guys to kind of really look around in big blue button. I know Zoom and Google Meet have been the forerunners uh, for this virtual learning, but there are some really great um, tools in big blue button. So uh, we'll be bringing you more as the weeks come. And I'll also do a separate tech tip on the power of the breakout room. So we know Zoom is kind of a front runner with breakout rooms, but there is a breakout room option here. So I'll briefly show it to you. So if you click on the little gear icon, um, you see here it says create breakout rooms. So you can randomly assign, of course, if I had students, then all of their names will be here. I can determine how many breakout rooms I wanna have, and then I'll just simply drag and drop students um, where I want them to be. Um, of course, that's a whole different uh, tech tip. So we'll kind of jump into that later. I hope um, you found something helpful and I hope this at least challenge you to kind of play around in the system and just utilize the things that Canvas already has.